Hello everyone, welcome back to Study Motion's Computer Science Series. And today we're going to talk about text, sound, and images. First, we're going to talk about the ASCII code and Unicode. The ASCII code system, or the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, was set up in 1963 for use in communication system and computer systems. A newer version of the code was published in 1986. The standard ASCII code character set consists of 7-bit codes, 0 to 127 in denary or 00 to 7f in hexadecimal. That represents the letters, numbers, and characters found on a standard keyboard, together with 32 control codes that use codes 0 to 31 in denary or 00 to 19 in hexadecimal. This table shows part of the standard ASCII code table. Only the control codes have been removed. Consider the uppercase and lowercase codes in binary of characters. For example, lowercase a and uppercase a, lowercase y and uppercase y. The above examples show that the 6 bit changes from 1 to 0 when comparing the lowercase and uppercase of a character. This makes the conversion between the two an easy operation. It is also noticeable that the character sets, example a to z, 0 to 9, etc., are grouped together in sequence, which speeds up usability. Standard ASCII uses 8 bit codes. 0 to 255 in denary or 0 to ff in hexadecimal. This gives another 128 codes to allow for characters in non-English alphabets and for some graphical characters to be included. ASCII code has a number of disadvantages. The main disadvantage is that it does not represent characters in non-Western languages. For example, Chinese characters. As can be seen in this figure, where DOS and Windows use different characters for some ASCII codes. For this reason, different methods of coding has, have been developed over the years. One coding system is called Unicode. Unicode can represent all languages of the world, thus supporting many op operating systems, search engines, and internet browsers used globally. There is overlap with standard ASCII code since the first 128 English characters are the same. But Unicode can support several thousand different characters in total, as can be seen in this table. ASCII uses one byte to represent a character, whereas Unicode will support up to four bytes per character. The Unicode Consortium was set up in 1991. Version 1.0 was published with five goals. A sample of Unicode characters are shown in this figure. As can be seen from the figure, characters used in languages such as Russian, Romanian, and Croatian can now be represented in a computer. Now, let's talk about sound. Sound waves are vibrations in the air. The human ear senses these vibrations and interprets them as sound. Each sound wave has a frequency, which is the number of waves per second. Wavelength, which is distance between two consecutive crests or trough, and amplitude, which is the distance from the center line to the top of a crest or to the bottom of a trough. The amplitude specifies the loudness of the sound. Sound waves vary continuously. This means that sound is analog. Computers cannot work with analog data. So sound waves need to be sampled in order to be stored in a computer. Sampling means measuring the amplitude of the sound wave. This is done using an analog to digital converter. To convert the analog data to digital, the sound waves are sampled at regular time intervals. The amplitude of the sound cannot be measured precisely, so approximate values are stored. This figure shows a sound wave. The x-axis shows the time intervals when the sound was sampled, 1 to 21, and the y-axis shows the amplitude of the sampled sound to 10. At time in interval 1, the approximate amplitude is 10, at time interval 2, the approximate amplitude is 4, and so on for all 20 time intervals. 
Because the amplitude range in, in this figure is 0 to 10, then four binary bits can be used to represent each amplitude value. For example, 9 would be represented by the binary value 1001. Increasing the number of possible values used to represent sound amplitude also increases the accuracy of the sample sound. For example, using a range of 0 to 127 gives a much more accurate representation of the sound sample than using a range of, for example, 0 to 10. The number of bits per sample is known as the sampling resolution, also known as the bit depth. So in our example, the sampling resolution is 4 bits. Sampling rate is the number of sound samples taken per second. This is measured in hertz, where 1 hertz means 1 sample per second. So how is sampling used to record a sound clip? The amplitude of the sound wave is first determined at set time intervals, the sampling rate. This gives an approximate representation of the sound wave. Each sample of the sound wave is then encoded as a series of binary digits. Using a higher sampling rate or larger resolution will result in a more faithful representation of the original sound source. However, the higher the sampling rate and our sampling resolution, the greater the file size. The benefits and drawbacks of using a larger sampling resolution when recording sound is shown in this table. CDs have a 16-bit sampling resolution and a 44.1 kHz sample rate, that is 44100 samples every second. This gives high-quality sound reproduction. Now let's talk about images. Bitmap images are made up of pixels, picture elements. An image is made up of a two-dimensional matrix of pixels. Pixels can take different shapes such as each pixel can be represented as a binary number, and so a bitmap image is stored in a computer as a series of binary numbers, so that a black and white image only requires one bit per pixel. This means that each pixel can be one of two colors, corresponding to either one or zero. If each pixel is represented by two bits, then each pixel can be one of the four colors, corresponding to 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. If each pixel is represented by three bits, then each pixel can be one of the eight colors, corresponding to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. The number of bits used to represent each color is called the color depth. An 8-bit color depth means that each pixel can be one of 256 colors. Modern computers have a 24-bit color depth, which means over 16 million different colors can be represented with X pixels. 2 to the power X colors can be represented as a generalization. Increasing color depth also increases the size of the file when storing an image. Image resolution refers to the number of pixels that make up an image. For example, an image could contain 496 by 3072 pixels, which is 12582912 pixels in total. The resolution can be varied on many cameras before taking, for example, a digital photograph. Photographs with a lower resolution have less detail than those with a higher resolution. For example, look at this figure. Image A has the highest resolution and image E has the lowest resolution. Image E has become pixelated, fuzzy. This is because there are fewer pixels in image E to represent the image. The main drawback of using high resolution images is the increase in file size. As the number of pixels used to represent the image is increased, the size of the file will also increase. This impacts on how many images can be stored on, for example, a hard drive. It also impacts on the time to download an image from the internet or the time to transfer images from one device to another. A certain amount of reduction in resolution of an image is possible before the loss of quality becomes noticeable. That's all for today. Thank you for watching StudyMation. Any minute educational videos.